Well, in his first live television interview, John Quilly joins us now, along with his caseworker, Jan Cunliffe. Good to see both of you this morning. When you look at those moments and that footage that we all have seen, um, what goes through your mind? Does it even feel like you? Not really, no. Uh, well, the way it gets portrayed, it seems like a bit more of a, an action movie or something. It just seems something so surreal, I don't know. Just, yeah. And you're one of the action heroes as well. That's the thing, because we've now got the advent of mobile phone footage, so we could see what happened on the bridge. But John, take us, take us back a little bit, if you can, and talk us through the day, what you were doing there, who you were with, and, and how it all unfolded. Um, the day was just um, uh, a celebration of the learning together scheme that has been running, that was all part of, and just because um, it spread that far up and down the country. It was just a, a chance for everyone to come together. And this is something for those who've left prison and are getting on with their life and reaching out to them, is that right? Well, no, I'd say it's, it is... It does do that, but I'd say the critical part of it is for the people in prison mm. who, who have never experienced that kind of education or interacted with them kind of educated people. Cos you studied for a degree, didn't you, when you were in prison? Yeah, I studied for a, a law degree. Just... And, and, and you claim that this Learning Together programme sort of changed your life, helped sort of save you, really. It's hugely important to you, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, I was going through um, therapy at that time as well, but Learning Together, coming to the therapy prison I was in, mm. and, yeah, took over a big part of my life. Um... So there's a conference just by London Bridge that day that you'd agreed to come along to, to be a part of, yeah. uh, with lots of other people that have been through and been a part of this yeah. uh, incredible scheme. And, and what happened when, when you suddenly realised something was wrong? I don't know, it just all happened so quickly. We, uh, we were just out on the balcony above the staircase having a chat. And um, all of a sudden, it was just loads of noise started. Well, you could just hear loads of noise and screaming and, like, mm. female voices, but... Initially, it wasn't clear whether it was just like horse playing, messing about, or mm. then within seconds it got a lot uh, more intense and more severe. And there was no doubt in some it was a foot downstairs. So, mm. what was so it when about? When did you? Yeah, sorry. When did you reach for the fire extinguisher? When did you suddenly? When did it sort of like focus in your mind that you had to take action? The fire extinguisher was uh, near the end. We was um, fighting inside for, couldn't have been that long, but it seemed like about 10 minutes, probably about five minutes. Initially, I was there um, on my own with just the lectern. So you picked up a lectern to try and, was this because Usman Khan had, he had two knives, is that right? Yeah, when I initially seen him, there was, the, the lady was behind me on the stairs and um, Osman was at the other side of me um, with his knives. So, obviously, I'm, I'm just looking for something to defend myself with. To protect yourself, and yeah. there wasn't a lot there, apart from pictures on the walls. Yeah. So. And a lectern. Yeah. And did you speak to him? Did you say anything to him? It was, like, a conversation, but, like, shouting, comes, like, it was just... Trying to get him to stop. Yeah, it was just, like, most, most of it was probably nonsensical, like, what, you, what do you think you're doing? And, obviously, mm. he's bouncing, it's obvious what he's doing, but... Did he mm. say anything when you said, what are you doing? <laughs> He didn't say much, no, he just said... Um, the only thing I remember him saying is, when I asked him about the, the belt, that he was waiting for the police before he blew it. So you thought he had a suicide belt, suicide vest on, didn't you, when you were so brave that you tackled him? Well, yeah, initially, yeah. I do, do you still think about the day, John? Does you, do you all wake the time, yeah. all the time? Yeah. Does what it do you... haunt you? A bit, yeah. Why? Just because the people lost their lives. Mm. You shouldn't have. Mm. There's, um, there's a sort of a change to the law happening, or they're trying to change the law so that these terrorists don't get released. There's no early release on their sentences. I wondered if you have any feelings about that with regards to what you've been through and with regards to sort of the terrorists that, that, that you confronted. I do, but I think um, we have to stop distinguishing or putting people into categories. I think whatever you've done, right or wrong, the 
you, you should get a, a proportionate sentence to that. Maybe terrorist offences, because of the purpose behind it, should have extra added on to it. But mm -hmm. I think once you go over 10, definitely 15 years sent in prison, it stops being effective, it stops being a punishment, and then it's just arbitrary. I think people don't... If you've not learned after 10, 15 years, then I don't think... Yeah, we're going to learn. About so you think the longer sentences have very they little just impact? Make people angry and mm -hmm. like, very fundamentally, these other terrorists who was due to get out of have just suddenly had a sentence imposed on them for something they've not done. It's very interesting because you, in a sense, are one of probably very few people that can see both sides of the impact. Oh yeah, it's hard. I know it's hard, especially if you been a victim or you, you yeah. even know a victim, mm. you're going to be, I guess, biased from, from the off or...? Mm. I think one of the poignant things is, is um, a government has now suddenly come up with these new laws and they've done it urgently and they've made it happen really fast. But in 2016, and, and the law that John, John was convicted of, um, the, the, that they said the law had taken a wrong turn. Um, but yet, all these years later, there hasn't been any emergency laws put into place to help all those people mm. who are now wrongful, wrongfully convicted. Mm. Uh, and the years and years have gone by and still uh, government doesn't do anything about it. And two, two men on the, on the bridge that night were two men that are supported by Jengba. Um, mm. Two men that we believed were innocent and two men that then saved lives. Yeah. Uh, and yet the government hasn't even thanked, haven't even thanked John for what he did that night. Is that night. true, John? Not yeah, well, I don't want no thanks from him, but... But at least... You but know. there's not been but no yeah, it does just just highlight, nothing. It does just highlight how quick they can change laws and make them retrospective when, when they say it's virtually impossible, mm. but at the drop of a hat, because it'll get them some votes. It's all wrong. Well, know. can we thank you? On behalf of Good Morning Britain, people watching, and all those people that you saved for doing what you did, because it was yeah. brave. You might not feel you're a hero, but it was very brave. And thank you for coming to talk to us this morning. It's been great to meet you. Dan, thank yeah, you for joining us as well. You.